Hello and welcome. I'm Paterno S. Makel. Welcome to Rappler. As the Philippines prepares to choose its next president, let's get to know the main man in charge of running the elections in May 2016. With us today is Comlec Chairman Andres Bautista. Thank you for joining us, Chairman Bautista. Thank you for having me, Pat. Chairman, uh, before anything else, we'd like to know how it all began. Uh, how were you chosen as Comlec Chairman? Well, um, I think it was... I'd say several months before, uh, before May of 2015, I received uh, certain feelers from people close to the president asking whether I was interested in uh, vying for the position of chairman of COMELEC. No? And I said, well, I've always believed that, you know, after all is said and done, uh, these things are a matter of destiny. I'm not really pining for the position, but on the other hand, as I said, if I can be seen as somebody who can help out in the process, um, I wouldn't mind being transferred. No? You know, at that time I was with the PCGG, and that was in, I would say, maybe about January, and then didn't uh, hear from them. No? And then uh, I'd say maybe it was about mid-April when uh, again I got a few calls from people saying that the president was seriously considering my volunteering for the job. You know? And then about a week before I got a call from the president, met with him, and then he asked, is it true you're volunteering for the job? In fact, that was the first thing he, he asked me and I said, yes, Mr. President. So you did apply for the job? Well, you know, you know, in the sense that I put my name into the ring, that is true, after being uh, asked. Uh, but I didn't lobby for it. Chairman, years before, uh, did, you, did you ever imagine you would become Comelec Chairman? Never. Okay, so this was one of those things that, again, it just fell into my lap. Well, in the same way that I never imagined myself to be the chairman of the Presidential Commission on Good Government. Mm -hmm. As a lawyer, uh, my dream was really just to be a teacher. And that's what I've been doing. As you know, also, I was dean of the Institute of Law of FEU for 15 years. Mm -hmm. So basically, that was my career track. But um, as in everything else in life, as uh, Mr. Box of Chocolate said, <laughs> Uh, Forrest Gump. He said, "You never know. You know what what you're gonna get." Chairman, you were uh, the head of uh, Shangri-La in the Philippines for for many years, and you were also the former dean of FEU's law school. How did these things help you uh, in in your first uh, months as Comelec chairman? Again, very much. You no, know. um, as you pointed out. Well, even before that, okay, my career path has been a bit. Uh, I would say extraordinary in the sense that I really didn't practice law here in the Philippines but practiced abroad. So I had the opportunity of working for an international law firm in New York for four years and then for in Hong Kong for four years. So and then after that I did join um, as you said Shangri-La and was with them for four years. I think this combination of law and management was good uh, experience for me. Uh, because uh, running the COMELEC does not just entail legal knowledge. On, you know, on the other hand, it uh, requires much more than that, which is managerial and ad administrative know-how. And I think that my um, uh, previous work uh, helps me in that regard. One more thing I wanted to tell you, Pat, was that uh, when I was with FEU, we pioneered the JD MBA program you know, which is the combination of law and business. We introduced that in the Philippines. It's a five-year program wherein you graduate not only as a lawyer, but also with an MBA degree. Because I've always believed that law, a law background makes you a better businessman. And on the other hand, a good businessman will be much, you know, will be helped if he or she has a legal foundation. But Chairman, uh, of course, some people would ask, uh, you are not uh, an election lawyer, you're not a COMELEC insider. What qualifies you as COMELEC chairman? My thinking on that is the other way around, that the fact that I was an outsider, in fact, makes me perhaps more qualified because I provide a fresh pair of eyes. 
I provide a new perspective on how things are being done, right? That when you think about it, um, what is the assessment of people in respect of how elections have been conducted in the past? And so it, I think it's good to sort of like bring in fresh blood, so to speak, to be able to uh, provide new insights into an otherwise old process. And also your managerial background. That's correct. Well, as I said, I think that helps in, you know, in the way that you make decisions, that you just don't focus on the legal. You know, that's one of the things that I've noticed in my first two months in office, wherein people are too constricted by a legal mindset. As, to, you know, as opposed to trying to figure out, okay, how can we enhance the process? How can we make it better? How can we make it easier for our voters to exercise their right of suffrage? How can we change the way elections are conducted so that, again, uh, the, you know, the primary characteristic of credibility comes out? So these are the things that hopefully I'm bringing into Comelec. And that's a rare mix, a lawyer who's a manager also. And uh, we've been informed that your managerial blood, has, you've shown this since high school. Oh, well, <laughs> I don't know about that. But as a high school uh, student, I remember I would uh, do some business on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, selling things, you know. I was also interested in, in business. And in fact, if that's one of the regrets I have, maybe it's that, that I should, aside from practicing the legal profession, I think it would have been good if also I opened up a business. Were you a businessman since uh, you were a teenager? Oh, well, only small businesses. You know, I would. You know, I remember I would sell uh, fish, you mga aquarium fish, and then I also sold the bubble gum, and then I also dabbled into fireworks. Fireworks, oh. bubble gum, fish <laughs> for. Wala lang, you know, again, to help uh, augment my, uh, my allowance mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, yeah, to help me go through school. You've been very innovative since high school. I think that's a very important characteristic uh, in whatever endeavor you are placed in. You, know? you have to be innovative, creative, thinking out of the box. As I said, that's, you know, sometimes when you're in a position for a, you know, for a long period of time, you tend to already lose sight of, say, the bigger picture. No? And here, uh, as I said, the fact that I am an outsider of Comelec, have not really been an election law practitioner, I think helps. But having said that, uh, I am no stranger to election law because the subject that I teach in law school is political law. Political law. Of which election law is one of the components. Mm. And this uh, being innovative, how do we see this in how you have uh, run the COMELEC so far? Oh, well, maybe I think it's too early to, to you know, to uh, make a judgment. Although one of the things that, for example, we're pushing right now is this no bio, no boto campaign in the, you know, with respect to the malls. Uh -huh. So we have tied up with various malls. As I said, in order to find ways and means by which we can enhance the voting process, we want to make it comfortable and convenient Mm -hmm. for our voters whenever they exercise their right of suffrage. Chairman, what was the first thing you did here in Comelec? Um, well, the <laughs> first thing was to ask our spokesman, si Director James Jimenez, to shave. And why is that? Because whenever I would watch Comelec before and I would uh, see him on TV, He's a very eloquent person. No? Mm -hmm. He speaks well, both English and Tagalog. Mm -hmm. Pero nababansin ko, medyo pag siya lumalabas, parating hindi nagsishave, tapos yung suot niya, yung jacket lang, tapos ano. Sabi ko sa kanya, the medium is the message. Eh. You want to project clean elections. Sabi ko, you have to look clean as well. No? And sabi ko rin, you want to create an atmosphere nga that is conducive to work that is conducive to professionalism. And sabi ko kahit na papaano, that's, well, the other thing na pinakiusap ko sa aming mga senior uh, officers na kung pwede, yung aming dress code. Kasi dati, Monday lang nagbabarong yung mga, oh, yung mga, ano dito, senior managers, pati yung mga lawyers. Mm -hmm. Kaya una kong pakiusap, sabi ko siguro maganda, Monday to Thursday, dapat naman, 
you know, we are really in business attire. And business attire meaning either you're in barong, kahit na short barong, or shirt and tie. And then Friday, pwede mag-casual. Because I said nga, I, you know, we are not supposed to be politicians. No? We're not, uh, you know, that the business of running elections is something that is very professional. In which case, we have to give that professional image and look uh, whenever we deal with our clientele. And so, we're trying to do that more. You also ask the offices to... to clean up there. Ayun pa. O yun. Eh. Kasi nga, parang ang feeling ko, ang Comelec, alam mo, 75 years na siya. No? Oh, correct. Pero sa lahat ng mga constitutional commissions, COA, civil service, parang napag-iwanan. Pag tinitignan mo, kasi for example, umiikot ako sa ibang mga probinsya, ang ganda-ganda ng building ng COA, ang ganda-ganda ng building ng civil service, ang Comelec, isang maliit na kwarto na nasa tabi ng munisipyo, Uh-oh. inaamag, uh, magulo, madumi. Uh-huh. Isang beses pa nga nakakita ako ng poste. Okay, na puro may mga violet-violet. Sabi ko, bakit ganyan? Ba't may kita mo smudges eh? Ang nangyayari pala, yung habang nagre-register yung voter para linisin yung yung ink, linaano na lang nila dun sa wall. Ah, talaga? Sa dami kasi daw, wala hmm. daw pambili yung komilek ng panglinis nung kanilang thumb, no? So, y- y- yung mga ganito bagay na ako feeling ko naman na ang Comelec really um, plays a very important role in our society. Alam mo, ang sandigan ng ating demokrasya ay ang halalan. Napakahalaga. Di ba? The voice of the people is the voice of God. Vox Populi, uh-huh. Vox mm-hmm. Day. And that pagka hindi ginampada ng Comelec ng tama ang kanyang tungkulin, ang ating demokrasya babagsak, no? So it's a very important role and sabi ko talaga dapat you know we have to be able to infuse kumbaga new life into that role no um alam din naman natin kumbaga may mga paratang na ang Comelec parang yung image niya medyo questionable no marami nagsasabing yun na nga na hindi tama yung mga ibang gin, mga nangyayari sa sa loob ng Comelec no and that's why right now sabi ko we're trying to adapt what I call the eat principle, EAT. Oh, we try to be efficient, accountable, and transparent in the way we do things. No? And another thing I noticed is uh, the press conference venues, You, I think it was it was you who ordered the tarpaulin. Yeah, may tarpaulin. Yeah. Ba, nga, yung, uh, to put dignity into the, into the office. No? And as I said, you know, we don't want to be extravagant. We're not trying to be opulent. Pero hindi din naman yung kawawa. Oh, kasi kapag, alam mo, pag kawawa yung, yung mga opisina, kawawa yung magulo yung inyong mga, yung inyong work environment, na-imbibe yan ng workforce. Eh. You are keen on image. I think it's important. No? Why, oh, why are you keen on well, image? Well, because again, in life, uh, ano ba, perception is reality. Sabi ni Plato yan. No? O, oh, na, kumbaga, eh, the... The medium is the message mm-hmm. when you think about it. And therefore, you have to be able to present yourself in such a way that, that people will believe you. No? Especially in this day and age where in technology is king, um, you know, people make impressions easily. And so you try your best to ensure that kumbaga, you try to enhance your image. Pero alam din naman natin, hindi lang puro image yan, no? na hindi lang pwedeng puro form. Okay. That there has to be substance behind it. But hindi yan, makikita na naman yan ng ating taong bayan. Eh, kung talagang merong track record of, of performance ang, ang isang uh, agency ng, ng pamahalaan. Before you entered Comelec, what was the image of the Comelec for you? Sa totoo lang, parang magulo. Oo. Bakit po? Ewan ko ba. Parang, again, I, you know, I got the impression na Maraming problema, mga maraming uh, uh, controversies. Oh, so, kailangan linisin. No? Ulat ng... Well, yun nga. Di ba? Nung mga, for example, in the way that they did things, parang kulang sa transparency. And that's why, um, uh, yun ang aking pangako, no? na dapat talaga we have to increase transparency and accountability in the way we do things. What do you think of the decision not to subject the refurbishment to, of PICOS machines to, to a bidding process? Oh. Alam mo, mahirap pat na, kumbaga, siyempre ngayon, sabi nga nila, 
hindsight is always 2020. Oh, no? correct. Um, sa totoo lang, hindi ko alam kung bakit nila ginawa yun, pero siguro nga, uh, you give them the benefit of the doubt. Pero, I've realized, dito sa sa gobyerno, dapat in case of doubt, you err on the side of prudence. You err on the side of being transparent. Eh. If you had voting power before, mm -hmm. what what would you vote for? What At that option? time? Uh -oh. I would have gone through bidding because bidding is the more prudent option. Eh. And because of that decision of the Supreme Court, our timetable was... Uh, was cut short by, what, four or five months? Nanganganib pa kayo mag-manual? Well, gahul tayo ngayon sa oras, no? Pero, no, that's not in our vocabulary, na kumbaga, ang, ang nakasaad sa batas is automated elections, no? So, yun ang ating direction. What do you want to happen to Comelec? What kind of image do you want Comelec to have now? One word, credible. No? Yun ang aming holy grail for our 2016 elections. We want credible elections because this is good for everybody it will be good it will strengthen our democracy it will make sure that the mandate of uh, whoever will be elected will be stable it will strengthen our economy and that's good for business and because of that hopefully progress will continue to flourish chairman what has given you your worst headache here in comelec so far worst headache <laughs> I think it's uh, no, no. the biggest challenge that Comelec faces is time, okay? and that uh, right now our efforts are all focused on the May 2016 elections. You know, that I think that uh, Comelec will rise or fall depending on the outcome of the 2016 elections. Uh, I wish we had more time, but um, we don't, and so we have to play with the cards that have been dealt to us as best as we can. We're trying to follow a, um, a timetable, but we also know that even if we have such a timetable, there are other variables you know, that will come into play, like court cases, like issues on technology and things like that. You know. So really here, it's been a juggling act uh, for the last two months. In fact, I was saying that I've only you know, I've been two with the Comelec for two months. Oh, nga. oh <laughs> but it feels like two years, you know. mag <laughs> naman na? Mag-titrina. mag, -titri na. mag, -titri na. mag -titri oh. na. But marami, maraming mga problema. Sa totoo lang. But nabi ko nga also, wag nang, let's stop looking at the past. Let's move forward. Let's look at the future. And nabi ko nga, we can go back to the past after May 9, 2016. But let's solve first the challenge of May 9, 2016 ensure that we have credible elections on that day. Is there anything else you would like to tell our viewers um, about the elections? Yes, I think most important is that it is the duty of each and every voter to vote right. It is the responsibility of COMELEC to count right. Now, alam mo, Hindi ko na pakikialaman kung bakit ang isang botante ay bumoto para kay ganyan o para kay ganito. After all is said and done, dapat nag-isip nag yung botante yun. Pero gagalangin ko yung boto niya. At dapat ang tungkulin ng komilik ay siguraduhin na yung botong yun ay binilang ng tama. Thank you very much, Chairman Bautista. We've been speaking to Comelec Chairman Andres Bautista. Thank you for joining us. I'm Paterno S. Makel.